Your journey to become a ninja starts in a realm reborn, where Jackie, the leader of the Rogues Guild, lets you join. Side note here, the Rogues Guild is the black ops squad of the Limsa Lomensa government that keeps the black market and the underground of the nation in check. But getting back to the game, Jackie sends you on a mission with your fellow rogues, Underfoot and Vikebe, where they teach you how to be a rogue. However, during your adventures, you meet a yellow Jackie captain named Milala, who hates the rogues because she thinks that they're a relic of Limsa Lomensa's past with pirates, and because pirates killed her sisters. Then Milala tells Jackie that a Maelstrom ship was looted by the bloody executioners, and that they stole three valuable treasures. Side note here, the Yellow Jackets are Limsa Lomensa's police force, and the Maelstrom is Limsa Lomensa's military. And lastly, the bloody executioners are a pirate crew that used to compete with Commander Melvib when she was a pirate. But getting back to the story, Milala baits Jackie into a bet where if the Yellow Jackets recapture two or more of the three treasures, the Rogues Guild has to disband. The competition becomes tied with it coming down to the last treasure, the Black Sarcophagus. However, due to Underfoot's investigation, he finds out that the Black Sarcophagus is a prototype magic tech bomb and that the bloody executioners want to bomb Limsa Lomensa and Melvib to bring back the Age of Piracy. So Jackie sends you to warn Milala about this threat so she can get the Yellow Jackets ready. Unfortunately, later on that night, Milala is attacked by the bloody executioners as they enter the city. But Jackie, Underfoot, Vikebe, and you find her. And before Milala passes out, she tells Jackie what's happening and begs the Rogues Guild to save the city. Then Milala passes out. Following this, you and the Rogues Guild disable the bombs and defeat the bloody executioners who are no match for you. After the battle, Milala is healed and wakes up, only to find out that she's been given the credit for stopping the executioners. Then Milala realizes that Jackie stole her treasure, meaning that he won the bet, but she is okay with this. After this, the game cuts to you and the rogues, where Jackie explains that he hopes this could be the start of the rogues and Milala having a better relationship. Following this, some time passes and Jackie asks for your help to investigate some shady people in Wineport with Underfoot. Your investigation leads your duo to a suspicious girl. After this, your duo follows the girl until an eccentric ninja named Karasu appears, revealing that the girl named Tsubame can defend herself. But before Tsubame can attack Karasu, she is stopped by her brother Oboro. After this, Karasu retreats. Then the siblings explain that they're from Plum Springs in Doma and that they're ninjas. On top of telling you that their leader sent them to Eorzea to kill Karasu because he betrayed Doma, which led to Garlemald conquering the nation and killing thousands of people, including Oboro and Karasu's master, Gekai. Then you pick up a job stone from one of their dead allies and it resonates with you. So Oboro offers to teach you how to be a ninja in exchange for you teaching him and Tsubame about Eorzea and helping them deal with Karasu. So you follow them to the docks to begin your training. But along the way, Karasu helps you obtain your ninja gear during one of your missions. And then he leaves. Following this, Oboro appears and you tell him that Karasu helped you, which confuses him. Then Oboro finds a letter on the ground from Karasu, realizing that Karasu drags you all over Las Noches to make Oboro leave the docks, so Karasu could attack while he wasn't there. So your duo goes back to the docks where Karasu has defeated Tsubame. Following this, you and Oboro fight and defeat Karasu, but you don't kill him. So Karasu explains that when Doma fell to Garlemald, he didn't betray their village and that Master Gekai's death didn't sit right with him. So he left Plum Springs to find answers and found Gekai working with Garlemald. Then Gekai forced Karasu to work for him or die, which led to this conversation right now. After this, Karasu tells your duo that Gekai will appear at Candle Keep Quarry, so they need to get ready. Then Karasu commits suicide, being tired of life. Later on, Oboro decides to face Gekai alone, but you and Tsubame follow him. Then Gekai explains that he joined Garlemald so the village would be left alone. But Oboro doesn't accept that answer. Following this, 
this, your trio defeats Gekai. However, after the fight, Karasu appears, explaining that he faked his death so Garlemald and the ninja village would leave him alone, so he could live his life as he wishes. So Oboro agrees to tell the elders that Karasu is dead and then Karasu leaves. Following this, Tsubami goes back to Doma to tell the elders of their success, while Oboro will stay in Eorzea for the time being so he can expand his horizons so Plum Springs doesn't make ninja like Gekai and stop things from happening to people like Karasu. Following this, you say your farewells and go on your adventure in Heaven's Ward, but eventually you meet up with Oboro and Jackie where you help them find a thief from Doma that has been wreaking havoc on Las Noches. Your trio eventually finds the thief and her partner, however this duo turns out to be a ninja princess from the Yatsugiri clan named Yuki and her retainer named Akagi. They explain that they're just taking back the treasures that were stolen from them and that they'll leave when they complete their mission. So Oboro asks you to help Yuki hoping that this will make you a better ninja. However Yuki doesn't want your help so she leaves but Akagi says that he'll let you know when they need help. As you and Oboro continue to help Yuki she eventually reveals that she didn't want your help because she didn't want anyone else dying for her like they did when her kingdom fell. But due to Akagi's influence, she accepts your help on the conditions that you prioritize your own life over hers. Following this, your group finds out that the last treasure is in the possession of a pirate crew called the True Hounds that has a merciless captain named Rosaline and a ninja mercenary that was trained by Gekai called Redway. Fortunately, your plan succeeds and Yuki gets the last treasure. However, Redway appears to force Yuki to become his hostage because the True Hounds captured some of her vassals that were looking for her. So you, Oboro, and Akagi make a plan where Oboro allows Redway to capture him while you follow them from a distance so your duo can find the True Hounds hideout. And your plan succeeds, so your trio defeats the True Hounds and Redway. After the battle, you free Yuki and her vassals. Following this, Yuki thanks you and Oboro for all of your help and explains that she'll sell the treasures to restore her kingdom and help her people. Also, Yuki sends a letter to Plum Spring elders explaining how Oboro helped her. Then Yuki, Akagi, and the vassals leave. After this, Oboro congratulates you on becoming a stronger ninja and wishes you luck on your future journeys. Then you go on your adventures in Stormblood, but you eventually visit Oboro who is confused about why the elders haven't called him back to Doma, considering that he lied about why he stayed in Eorzea. Then your duo is contacted by Jackie who needs your help dealing with some domains who stole a scroll from a Limsilomensen ship. Your trio's investigation leads them to Karasu, who is looking for the scroll and tells you that your group of domains are on their way to Hingashi. Then Karasu leaves. Following this, your group goes to Kugane where they pick up the trail and reunite with Tsubame. As your group looks around, you find out the thieves are a group called the Garnet League, led by Zakuro Brightblood, and that they stole the scroll for an unknown client. Following this, Oboro explains that Zakuro keeps the scroll on her at all times. Following this, Underfoot and Vikebe arrive. So Jackie makes a plan where Tsubame, Underfoot, and Vikebe will stop Zakuro Zakuro, so you can drop a bucket of white paint on her, forcing her to go back to the bathhouse where Jackie and Oboro will distract her while you steal the scroll. When you, Oboro, and Jackie regroup, Oboro realizes that it's a forbidden summoning Mudra that was given to his village by the king of Doma a long time ago. Following this, Karasu appears to explain that he hired the Garnet League for his new master and tells Oboro to give him the scroll or or the Garnet League will kill the rest of the group, which explains why they haven't returned yet. So after this, Oboro reaches out to Yuki to help you rescue Underfoot, Vikebe, and Tsubame. However, Karasu reappears and tells our heroes to face the Garnet League at the Isle of Beko, saying that he'll let us have the scroll if we win. 
So our group saves Underfoot and Vikebe, however Karasu breaks his deal and forces Oboro to give him the scroll in exchange for Tsubame's life. Then Karasu's master Hanzo, who is the 12th lord of the clan that created Ninjutsu appears, killing Karasu and Zakuro immediately. Then Hanzo insults our group and leaves. After this, Tsubame explains that the other half of the scroll is in Plum Springs, so they don't have to worry about Hanzo right now. This news surprises Oboro. Following this, Yuki returns to her kingdom to find information on Hanzo. Underfoot and Vikebe go back to Limsa Lomensa, while the rest of you travel to Plum Springs to plan your next moves. When your group gets to the village, Master Kamui explains that a long time ago, Master Sasuke, who founded Plum Village, escaped from Doma because it was ruled by a tyrant. Then Sasuke met the original Hanzo who took pity on him. So Hanzo gave Sasuke the summoning Mudora to defeat the tyrant. Following this, Sasuke cut the scroll in half, keeping one in Plum Springs and giving the other to the King of Doma, which led to the current state of events. Then Yuki returns to tell everyone that Hanzo's clan plans to attack Plum Springs to get the other half of the scroll. So everyone splits up to stop Hanzo at whichever path he plans to take to Doma. Luckily, you encounter Hanzo at the Azim step and Karasu appears, revealing that he faked his death again to catch Hanzo by surprise on top of telling him that the scroll Karasu gave him was a fake. After this, you and Karasu team up to defeat Hanzo. Following this battle, Karasu leaves and you explain what Karasu did to the others. But Oboro realizes that Karasu has the real scroll, so he decides to go back to Eorzea until he can get it back. And everyone else goes back to doing their own thing, including yourself. But after your adventure in Shadowbringers, you visit Oboro who asks for your help to get the scroll back from Karasu. So Oboro makes a plan for you to steal the scroll from Karasu's shack while Oboro distracts Karasu. And Oboro is so happy that the plan worked so well that he decided to celebrate with you and the rogues guild in Limsa Lomensa. However, another Oboro appears, saying that Karasu outdrank him and that he passed out. Then the Oboro next to you reveals that he was Karasu the entire time and that he disguised himself as Oboro to get the scroll back. Then Karasu leaves. So with Oboro and Karasu's rivalry continuing forever, this is the end of the Final Fantasy XIV Ninja storyline. With that being said, if you want to see more timeline videos like this one or video essays on your favorite video games, like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on. But with that being said, it's been Skips and I'm out.